Falling asleep on Tesla Autopilot. What exactly happens? Does the car keep you safe? That is what we will be finding out today. We did something similar to this a while ago, but constant software updates are improving Autopilot, so it's definitely worth testing again. And we can test a few other things that we didn't do in the last video, like what happens if you fall asleep or you get into difficulty and you're not actually on Autopilot, but you are still in a Tesla. So today we're gonna have a drive around and in safe locations, we're going to pretend we're asleep and just see what the car does. So a lot of people that don't know loads about Tesla think that you engage Autopilot and then you basically you don't have to do anything at all. The car will just drive you to your destination completely by itself. But in reality, it isn't like that at all. And the car is actually constantly checking to make sure that you are paying attention. Every few seconds, it sends little notifications telling you to nudge the wheel. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna pretend we're asleep or we've gotten into difficulty and we're gonna ignore those little notifications that Tesla sends you. Okay, autopilot is engaged. I'm gonna lower the speed down to about 30 just to give us a bit more time. There we go. And now, I'm not touching the wheel, I'm not touching any of the pedals, and in a few seconds time already, there'll be a little notification that pops up on the screen, there it is, apply slight turning force to steering wheel. So that's been absolutely no time at all, and it's already wanting me to nudge the wheel to let me know that I'm paying attention. Now because I've ignored this and not nudged the wheel, this blue flashing gets a little bit quicker to try and get my attention, and now you can see that it's beeped at me to also try and get my attention. So this is what would happen if I was asleep, and now, wait for it. Any second now, there it is. And you can see that it's lowering our speed, it's put the hazards on, and we've come to a complete stop. So this is exactly what would happen if I was asleep. And this just keeps beeping, it keeps the hazards on, it just keeps us in the middle of the roads, but it has stopped us safely, which I think is pretty impressive. And now if I press the accelerator, and I touch the wheel, everything turns off and I can continue driving. But if I was to try and put autopilot on now, I just can't. It tells me that it's unavailable for the rest of the drive because I've been ignoring their warnings. And in order to fix that, I have to just come to a complete stop. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Going to what park. Did not give Becky any warning. <laughs> My head! <laughs> Becky, I'm so sorry. But, as you can see, we're on autopilot again. That's all you need to do. You just need to stop for a second and then that counts as a new drive. And you can see that it is now taking us around these corners. Now these are quite difficult corners, so it will be quite interesting to see will autopilot drive around them or not. Um, I am gonna just be ready to take over because it's quite a sharp turn, this one. It's got us quite far in the middle of the road, but it is doing it. You can see already we're getting the, um, the little warnings because I've not touched the wheel. Oh, it's taking us very close to the edge. It's beeping. <sighs> got a little bit close to that car there, so I did have to take over. Yeah, autopilot didn't do great there. It took us around the corner nicely, but it definitely got way too close to that car on the other side of the road at the back end of the corner. Anyway, let's do it again while there's no one behind us. So turn autopilot on, reduce the speed down to a nice safe 30 miles an hour, maybe even a little bit slower, there we go. So I'm not touching anything once again, and you could see in that first demonstration, that it took no time at all before the car started kicking off. Look, the cars already give us our first warning, and then our second warning's about to show up because this starts flashing a little bit faster. We're going at 28 miles an hour. This is about to turn red and do a little beep. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. There it is. And you see, if I was to lower the speed with the buttons, that doesn't count. I have to actually nudge the wheel. You can see that all of the warnings are still going ahead. Got a little bit of a tricky area here on the left and it's took us to a complete stop. Nice. So if you had fallen asleep there because you were being stupid and driving when you were way too tired, I would say that those beeps would hopefully wake you up and snap you out of it and then you'd go pull over somewhere. So I think this is really safe. About 30% of all um, traffic collisions are actually caused by people either falling asleep or just driving when they're too tired. So the fact that Tesla has all of these warnings is definitely a lot better than driving and falling asleep in a car that doesn't have any kind of autopilot features. Okay, I need to put the car into park. There we go. And uh, did it a little bit slower that time. <laughs> and now because we've parked and set off again, we can actually turn autopilot back on, which I'm gonna do. All right, so what I'm gonna do is when that first wheel notification pops up, I'm gonna show you what you're meant to do. So it should pop up in a couple of seconds. There it is. So now all I'm gonna do is nudge the wheel, and now a timer is on your screen. So I wanna see how long the process takes from beginning to end, okay? So we're basically just gonna see how long it takes from me last nudging the wheel and letting me know that I'm paying attention to me ignoring all of the warnings. So there we go. The, it's just popped up saying apply slight turning. Um, ooh. 
Okay, I've never done that bit of, uh, I've never done that train track in autopilot before. So it looked like it stopped because it, it suddenly realized that it's gotten very steep. Anyway, we're ignoring all of the notifications still. It's flashing, auto steer unavailable for the rest of the drive and we are now at a complete stop. So there we go. I don't know exactly how many seconds that was. I assume it's probably about 30, but you can see that it's really, really making sure that there's no kind of risk. As soon as it thinks you're not paying attention for just a few seconds, the car starts kicking off at you, which is unreal. The only issue is if you stopped responding to all of the little warnings and you're on the motorway, the car would just stop in the middle of the lane. The car doesn't pull over to the hard shoulder. So obviously stopping in the middle of a motorway is incredibly dangerous, but falling asleep while driving is also incredibly dangerous. And I'd much rather I was in a car that was doing something, you know, putting the hazards on is a big deal. That warns all of the drivers around you. I'd much rather the car did that than us just crashing into someone and causing some serious damage. So let's pretend we're gonna fall asleep, but this time, will not be on autopilot because this car does have a few lane assist features so if it senses that you're swerving into the wrong lane it will push you back into the right lane again but it's a little bit difficult to trigger it so this time i'm not going to turn full autopilot on but i am going to turn cruise control on so basically that will keep us at 60 miles an hour unless i change the speed so i'm going to change us down to about 25 miles an hour there we go and i've still got full control of the steering wheel but i'm going to let go and i'm going to let us swerve over and see if it pu pushes us over into the right lane again so we're currently on the wrong side of the road. Okay, and it's it's <laughs> it's not done anything. Not so nice one, back. Tesla. <laughs> so it's always been a really difficult one to trigger. So let's try again. So that should start pushing us into the wrong lane. And it's not pushing us back over automatically. All right, if sliding into the right's fine, let's try and slide into the left. It's so scary doing this in a safe way. Okay, it said take control immediately, vehicle departing lane. So. That is actually what it's meant to do, which is great. The beeps came up before we actually made contact with anything over there. And obviously those initial beeps are gonna make you suddenly wake up if you are drifting off. And to be honest, I think it's probably a positive thing that we didn't get pushed back into this lane when we started sliding out over here. Cause there are circumstances that when you're driving that you do drift over because you're avoiding puddles or you're avoiding a bird in the corner of the road, those sort of things. So I'm actually quite impressed that it gave us those beeps. It didn't move us back, but it did beep at us to move ourselves back. Let's try it again. Let's see if we can actually get it to move the wheel. So I'm we're just gonna go down into yeah let's go down to 15 miles an hour so that if we do bump into the grass it doesn't cause any kind of problems so I'm just gonna push us over and okay <laughs> we're just driving on the grass at that point it's a small ditch as well so. <laughs> <laughs> let's try it on a different road I'm curious what would happen if I just when not on cruise control not on autopilot what if I let go of everything and start sliding into the side okay it's not giving us any kind of warnings right I'm gonna turn on the cruise control and let's slide into the side again. All right, I actually just left it. Sorry, it's a little bit tricky to kind of work out what happened, but I think that time when we fell into the side, I think it pushed me back over. Let me turn cruise control on. Let me go down to a nice slow speed, about 28 miles an hour. And now I'm gonna see it, what happens if I slide into the side. Okay, it's just it's just warning me, but I don't think it's pushing me back over again. The warnings are great though. It'd be nice if it pushed me back over, but I suppose they just have to be so careful about that because if the driver's intending to move over here to avoid something on this side, it could actually end up causing a problem instead. All right, let's do one final test, but before we do, please do subscribe to this channel. We do upload at least once a week. Anyway, we're gonna... Oh. Uh, I can't actually turn autopilot on because I ignore the warnings and it's mad at me. But I put it into park. I get out of park again, start driving and now I can turn autopilot on. That seems a bit much, considering you've just ignored a bunch of safety warnings. It doesn't hold the grudge for long, but there we go. We can we can turn autopilot back on. I'm gonna reduce our speed down quite a lot just to give us plenty time. And let's just ignore the warnings while I do the outro. So hopefully you did enjoy this video. Thank you very, very much for watching. Fingers crossed this one gets 2 million views like the last one did. If you did enjoy though, please do subscribe to our channel because we are uploading at least once a week and whenever there's a software update or something like that, we do a little video on it. Oh, there's our first beep. All right, I'm waiting for it to start kicking off at me again. It's flashing very, very fast. We're going at a strong 25 miles an hour. And there's our second beep and then we should have the big scary red wheel. There it is, fantastic. Autopilot unavailable for the rest of the journey. We've come to a complete stop. Our hazards are flashing. This car hasn't got a clue what's going on. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> My head! <laughs> Becky, I'm so sorry.